Good morning, everybody. This is a look at the departure from normal precipitation from June 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2020, the month of June. Uh, and you're seeing in here uh, a surplus of precipitation, a dry spot in here, uh, some dry spots in here. And that's how that shaped up, but a very, very wet in eastern Iowa and across portions of Wisconsin. And I would say a lot of that coming from uh, the combination of Tropical Storm Cristobal plus uh, a recent heavy rain event there across this region. Uh, I think that was last weekend. Um, that brought just an incredible amount of rain to that zone. Uh, but yes, that, and then we have the departure from normal precipitation since October 1st. Um, so that's pretty close to what? Is that like eight months? And you're seeing uh, this whole area, the zone, and a lot has to do with June, obviously the June we just had, but uh, it's tended to be sort of wet in this region. Uh, I don't know. I just, by chance, I, I accidentally made this map and then I thought, oh, well, we'll just use it anyway. Uh, this is the departure from normal temperature for June, showing you it's been warmer than average. Uh, I would say it kind of goes in a couple levels here. Um, like this is kind of above, and then this is well above uh, average for for June. So good to know. Um, pretty close to the forecast there in the temperature as far as the, the, the June forecast we had for precipitation. I had a bullseye in Iowa, then I pulled back, and but I, the the main thing was above average precipitation. I think that uh, some of these yellows you were seeing here are just probably a little bit under, um, a little bit under. So that's okay. All right. So as we go through the forecast here, I'm actually going to start with the 500 millibar anomalies from tropicaltibets.com, and then we'll work into the seven day uh, to show what I'm kind of looking at here. Uh, again, the model is at long ranges. Uh, specifically over, I mean, definitely over eight days are very hit and miss. And I, I generally don't trust them too much, but I just kind of want to see, to show you, you know, how might this change over the next week or two. Um, and at this current moment, all well, days four to eight, uh, that doesn't change that much going forward. But uh, but you're seeing uh, kind of like a little bit of a high pressure here, gusts and um, positive anomalies there, uh, negative anomalies here. And this jet stream is sort of like this. Kind of like that. I mean, not not literally, but uh, not a whole lot going on in here. Okay, this is kind of like a nothing burger right in that zone. As we go into the 9 to 13 day period, you're kind of seeing uh, this. I guess I would say this is tightening up a little bit. Uh, these negative anomalies are, are kind of moving off or gone. Uh, but you're seeing more activity kind of up in here. So that would be a good sign if you're looking for uh, more wetness across this region. Uh, more storms, more perhaps more severe weather. Uh, would it be more than average for July? I don't know, but uh, perhaps an uptick in activity because at the moment right now, uh, this is not doing a whole lot. This is, like I said, a big old nothing burger for Wisconsin. Okay. Um, as far as temperature anomalies go regarding these same time frames, so the 4 to 8, uh, 9 to 13, so this is the 4 to 8, uh, you're seeing a positive, we're, we're seeing um, above average in here probably, you'll see that reflected in the 7 day graphic too, but a, a below average out here in, a in the western United States, not, not useful to us I guess, but uh, just a reflection of that, a little bit of a trophic negative height anomaly over there. Um, as we go to the 9 to 13 day time frame, uh, again, you start, start to see some of these signals watered down a little bit, but you still see the overall trend seems to be above average, near normal to above average uh, for a lot of the United States. According to this ensemble, ensembles, again, anything over eight days, I, I just tend to not get too wrapped up into it. So I would say this is pretty near normal to above in terms of temperature forecast. But as we see, it's not too much different from the four to eight to nine to 13 for Wisconsin and the Great Lakes region. It sort of seems like uh, this pattern is kind of stuck with us. It's, it is the middle of the summer, so I would expect it to be uh, like that. Uh, I did talk about um, basically as this pattern shifts from the four to eight to nine to 13, you kind of get this flow that tightens up a little bit over here. Um, and that would be sort of, I guess you call it the ring of fire a little bit, but 
Um, I wouldn't say it's like <laughs> anything too crazy just yet, I, I, but I do see this, this signal here in the ensembles today uh, showing that, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could see an in increase. Typically this time of year, we do, the, do see the MCS systems come through. We did not see it in June. Um, June was different from what I expected, but, but July, uh, yeah, I mean, this is because of the upper level pattern. Um, now, if we take a look at the 500 millibar jet stream here on the, the DuPage Next Lab website, uh, you're seeing that again. Here's that gender energy. This is, whoops, we'll take that off. Uh, the gender energy kind of going up like this, okay, and then nothing because this is there's no upper level support of any kind. It's sort of like a, um, I don't know, a big curly queue of chaotic unknowns and whatever. Uh, yeah, but, but what you're looking for for severe weather or big weather systems are some are some some sort of jet streaks in there at the upper levels. Um, now this is a again this is about now. If we take it through time, uh, through the July fourth time frame, you're seeing that again at the upper levels, not a whole lot going on, but we're starting to see some changes. Um, again, in the ensembles, we saw that migration of not a migration, but more of an intensification of somewhat of a high over here. Uh, and then kind of into this pattern. So that's what we're looking for here. Uh, 69 hours, and as we go into Sunday, July 5th, now you're starting to see some changes. Now, again, we're getting close now to eight days out. Um, and uh, I mean, even five days out is, is sometimes a stretch, but I, I mean, for the purposes here, uh, yeah, I mean, so now maybe we're seeing some changes. And again, we're looking for that pattern as I see, as, as I've got labeled there. And there it kind of shows up, but maybe it's just a blimp in time, meaning like it may not happen for two weeks on end. It may happen for a, a weekend or it may only be three or four days that you see this type of pattern uh, come through. But um, yeah, that's interesting. So that's something to watch, but this is at 240 hours in the midsummer. So please take this information with a grain of salt. Uh, I think right now we're kind of looking at this nothing burger still and until until we get a few more days into the future here. Once we get past the July 4th time frame, I think we're going to have more opportunities for thunderstorms and such uh, <clears throat> as reflected by this. Uh, this again, this is the 6 to 12 day time frame. So this is post. Definitely that's next week uh, into next weekend and beyond. Okay, um, just to make sure. Oh, the one thing I wanted to show you was this uh, can related to once we get into this pattern where we sort of see maybe a little bit more activity across the Minnesota, northern North Dakota, northern Wisconsin, hopefully or potentially there at the 248, 48 hour time frame. Um, what does that look like at some of the various levels of the atmosphere now? If we can get some sort of inter interaction between and this is specifically, this is Sunday, July 13th, uh, 12th, July 12th. So that's like two weeks from now. Um, so hypothetically, if we get that 500 millibar here like that, and you get some sort of interaction between a low level jet or low level flow, a strong low level cyclone, like here you got something going on perhaps. And then some sort of reaction like this with a 500 millibar jet that kind of comes like that, <clears throat> something like that. Then you can get uh, severe weather events, uh, more high, higher risk, higher uh, notoriety, but we'll see. Uh, here's a seven day. I kind of steer away from it because I don't like it this time of year. I think it sucks. I think this is how are, you know, it's one out of five. This is sort of what I was thinking about even before I showed up to the, doing this video is it's like, um, how many of these are you going to miss, right? Before you actually get a thunderstorm. Um, so that's the thing. Um, and I should have done it four out of four. But anyways, you know, what are the chances? 20%, 30%, you could just blast this whole period with a chance of thunderstorms and people are gonna go like, hey, they said there was gonna rain today, it didn't. And then you get to Sunday, hey, it's supposed to rain today too, and it didn't. What do they know? And then you get to the third day, oh, it wasn't gonna rain. Then you get to the fourth day, you know, without any rain, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday, it's so suddenly you get deluged and it's like, okay, now how do we communicate that? Um, so anyways, I, I don't like it, but I guess the bigger takeaway here might be the temperature forecast as you're seeing 90s and 80s and upper 80s and all that good stuff there. This is for um, central Wisconsin. I'm sure it's going to be a little bit cooler near the lake and northern Wisconsin just a little bit. Uh, temperature forecast as it relates to average is black. Dotted line is 80 degrees, so it's above average for sure. Um, perhaps moments there if it rains or um, you know things just a little bit different. Maybe it's cooler, closer to average, but 
near to above average for temperatures. All right, um, so this is the time of year where well, I, I guess we've learned recently that we need to be taking um, a, a daily or if not by a daily look at the short range models because, um, I mean, for example, on Monday we had the thunderstorm event uh, across Wisconsin where you had a few severe thunderstorm warnings issued, uh, but it was mainly instability driven, um, thermodynamic driven uh, with little profile there to work with. So sheer profile, there's little, no organization. It just seems like sometimes you can get a lot of instability and that's just enough to create thunderstorms that look really, really crazy on radar. But anyways, I digress. Um, it kind of popped up on us. And I mean, really we had things popping up uh, on a short term basis that, you know, you just kind of, kind of expect like, for example, the heavy rain that happened here. Uh, you know, on some models I saw, it didn't have that at all. And it had it maybe over here and then over here. And then you get to the day of and it's like, sure, sure, you know, there it is, you know, boom, right in the spot where, um, you know, the HR showed it for a couple runs or something, you know, that was crazy. Um, but anyways, now let's take this NAM Nest model. Um, this is picking it up this morning, but uh, as we go to this afternoon, you know, they want to develop something over here. Uh, sure. Okay. I don't know. I think it's probably going to be in inconsequential. I mean, you may have something developed there, but I'm not going to really say much about that um, as we go to Friday and maybe something again, maybe a little pop-up storms here or there, but again, in, inconsequential, you could blast your forecast with a chance for thunderstorm and uh, for 80, per, 80 or 90 percent of us, nothing would happen. Um, and then as you go into Saturday, um, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again, okay? Um, but anyways, that and then, so that was basically up to 60 hours as far as this model will take us. So for the rest of it, I'll go take a look at the GFS here. And you're going to see, um, I mean, a lot of greens, we can't really tell the magnitude, you just know that it's raining or whatnot. But um, this is this afternoon, as you're seeing that, that chance for maybe some storms here. And again, I'm really zoomed out because I want to show you the full picture. Uh, but yeah, here's Wisconsin. If, you're, if you can't tell, uh, I'm having a hard time locating it. But as we go to this weekend, so this is, uh, this is Friday night. Again, there's that chance of rain again across Wisconsin. Again, small chance, isolated to scattered perhaps. Um, I'm not worried about it. And then as we go into Saturday, oh, uh, there it is again. Um, and then Sunday, oh, there it is again. And as we go to Monday now, you're seeing perhaps something coming out of the Western United States, maybe something like that. Um, a cold front or something that a really weak one looks like on, on this model. Uh, maybe something here uh, early next week. We'll see. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to tell. And in this model run, it actually has a washing out across the Minnesota, Northern Wisconsin region. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to, to really take from this. Uh, let's see Tuesday. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So again, I think next week you start to see a little bit more action, a little bit more organization, but still not uh, really sure if there's anything here worth mentioning. So. We'll keep an eye on it again. I, I'm this this time of year. I'm going to take a more relaxed approach to, to the forecast because just things that at long range just change so much. Um, here's a NAM, uh, but I, I mean you could again this this the, this part of it sort of like okay yeah I mean it's there now but who knows what this is going to end up being you know and why would I um, go crazy with trying to put detail into that aspect if it's just going to change a hundred times. So anyways, I know it sounds probably sounds like a normal weather forecast for most people. Uh, but for me, I like to be accurate. Um, and this isn't just something that uh, I throw out there and hope for the best. And, oh, well, you know, it's just my job for the day. Tonight, somebody else can come in and do it and do their best. But no, I, I really want to make sure that um, when I say something, I don't have to repeat it and I don't have to change it a second time. But anyways, I think we got our, your expectations set pretty well here. Uh, I think this is July 4th. Right, is it here? Let me just double check um, because I'm not sure. Let's see, July 4th is Saturday. Okay, Saturday. So um, I was, was I here? Where was I? I was here. Um, Saturday, so this is July 4th. And again, these are just small chances and I actually didn't pop up in here, but maybe just a small chance of rain there. Too. So, all right, thanks for tuning in. I will uh, keep you guys updated. If no news is good news, if nothing's happening, I will...
definitely keep my mouth shut. Um, what I'm watching, and I'm also going to, I think in early next week, I'm going to refresh the monthly forecast, take another look at that as the new talent connection data came in. I'm encouraged with the way June, the June monthly forecast went. So um, I'll keep going with it. All right. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later.